So this is, I designed my own test forms, something like this. So I assemble individual components. I have some standard pictures which I put in. I also tell the customer what they want their representative pictures. Along with this, I also put that if they want. And I designed this test form to the size of the machine. If it's 28, 40, 20, 29, or big one like this gravier machine. So I cover the full size of the machine so that then we also can find out if there is any problem in the machine. So this is the color management test chart. This for total ink weight, that's for the gray balance. These are the scanning targets. This for the trapping, they are fine type, reverse, normal, okay, four color, single color, fine lines, other control elements, density bars, top and bottom, these are slur bars and these are plate making targets, yellows, cyan, black, magenta and so on, okay. So and then we record the information, what condition we have used, what paper we have used, what inks we have used and so on, what fondant solution or depend on the process for gravier, what cylinders we have used or flexo, so on. This is also fingerprinting, what is it? This is called fingerprinting. Any process you carry on to find out or to check the printability of your machine is fingerprinting. Whether it's a digital machine, offset machine, letterpress, gravier, flexography, anything. Okay. So when we do this, we also make sure that machine is set properly. Then we get what is ink trap, we get what is dot gain, three color gray balance, tone curve, scanning curve, slur, control strip, text elements, fine lines, how the color scales are coming, color management chart, scanning chart, four color tone curve plus total ink weight and some test pictures. Okay. Then we work out what is the gamut. So once we get all this information, gray balance, tone, dot gain, everything, then we make the profile. Then we know what is the gamut that we are covering. Then we can compare on the same machine with different papers, how the gamut is changing, how the tones are compressed. Okay. So this is just a comparison. The human eye can see maximum number of colors. What we see on the monitor is like this or photographic film. This is Pantone special colors and this is CMYG. Okay, so it will be different depending on your printing conditions, inks, paper you are using. Because it depends on the tone reproduction limit. I showed you a slide earlier. That decides this gamut. Okay, so old days we used to use color charts like this. I mean you may still have because some designers still work with this. But it's, it's not a good indication actually. Because color charts, okay, they may be printed on different paper using different ink. Your ink and paper may be different, okay. Your dot gain may be different and so on. But this gives you combination of all the colors just as an indication, not the... Then there are reference catalogs like Pantone which are used in packaging. Pantone, Focal Tone, NIK and so many catalogs are there. Now Uber Inc has come out with the, that is micro, they have come out with the special chart called CRS chart which they claim is better than Pantone. Okay, so here there is indication of color and how the same color can be reproduced in CMYK or so on. So in color chart we look at the color reference, customer sample, we look at the matching color in color chart and we say okay this color can be reproduced with so much of cyan, magenta, yellow and black dot. Okay. But it is very important that Substrate and inks should match production if you want to use color chart. 
the dot gain in color chart may be different than what than your machine okay very important dot gain allowance is taken care color sequence you must maybe color chart and your printing may be having different sequence we don't know it all depends yeah so that is important very important in sequence is the same viewing light it's a very very important thing the light under which view we see should should be control light otherwise the light which gives different types of colors see on the left this highly bluish light this is yellowish light so the colors are going to look different okay so there has to be some control lighting to judge colors you can see there is a wide variety of lighting computer monitor not calibrated it will be at 9300 degree kelvin that is very highly bluish light okay as the color temperature goes up we discussed this last time color temperature when the temperature is high the light looks bluish when the temperature is low the light looks yellowish so computer monitor average daylight fluorescent lamp xenon sunlight balance light is here then other light fluorescent okay right up to the candle down to candle flame you can see 1900 degree kelvin so there are a wide variety of lighting so for color reproduction we must have control lighting you are in your place at your customer place you have to agree on the we since you have to agree on the color it's very important then what is the intensity of light you may have the right color but the, if the lighting level is very low then you cannot see the colors properly like in the evening or early morning the lighting level is low so you don't see colors properly during the day when the lighting level is up you can see colors better so there are variety of conditions then there are densitometers we talked last time which can measure only cyan magenta yellow black inks because it works on that one third of the spectrum principle it cannot take variation within the one third it can measure only one third of the light but there are instruments which we need to use because especially in packaging and many times in other printing we also use special colors to measure special color we need instrument called color emitter which can measure variation within the one third of the spectrum okay any question or okay then the next thing coming up is a spectrophotometry colorimeter measures at three points which coincide with the human eye sensitivity but if you have two colors where the spectrum is like this one is this one is this so at these points they are very close almost identical but in this area this color is reflecting more red this color is not reflecting so much red so this is where the color emitter is less useful where you need instrument called spectrophotometer which measures the entire spectrum all the wavelengths of the spectrum and gives you better indication of color if you measure only with color emitter some colors will match under some light but it will not match under other light this we call metameric match but if you measure the color with spectrophotometer and if spectrum is the same for both the colors then under any light it will match okay so you need the spectrophotometer which will measure throughout the spectrum 
So, now we come to digital color management. We talked about the conventional gray balance, tone reproduction, dot gain, trapping, everything. All those things are applicable here. Okay. So, in digital color management, I, can we go ahead or you want five minutes break? Huh? What about you? Huh? Continue. For students, probably it's very high level, is it? Hmm. But this is very important since as a packaging student, the special colors are very, very important. Can we go ahead? Sure. Hmm. Okay. So, in color management, there are few things we must understand. We talked about the basics. So, in same thing applies in color management. So, there are few things we must understand. What is device independent color? What is CIA system? Measurement instruments? Apple color sync? Creation of profiles, calibration routine, and what are the prerequisites for color management? Some of these things we had talked last time, but there are some misconception. Notion that software alone will do the trick. You must have your machine right if you want to do color management. Software will not work on its own. Casual approach to process beyond the pre-press activity. We think color management is only for the pre-press, it is for the entire press. Machines have to be set right, inks must be checked. Lack of continuous and persistent efforts to improve production methods. Inappropriate environment and viewing conditions. Uncalibrated equipment and materials. Lack of proper instrumentation. Improper knowledge, wrong procedures lack of appreciation by the designer that we have limitations in the printing process okay and progress and limits of current technologies there are some limitations of technologies so device dependent color is a color that you get which depends on a particular device okay So, if you are using digital camera, the sensors, how it generates the color, your color what you get depends on the equipment that you use. If you take expensive digital camera and a mobile camera, there has to be difference because expensive digital camera will have good components, good quality. Okay cheap cameras will have cheaper components. So, the color you get will not be the same. So, that is device dependent color. So, ca digital cameras are they work on red green blue principle basic color. Color scanners again RGB scanners separating colors into basic components red green blue. So, the color that it generates depends on the components which are used. Okay? Cheap scanner, not so good color. Expensive scanners, better color. Monitors, you get cheap monitors, you get expensive monitors. So, how they display the color, it depends on the type of monitor you are using. Expensive monitor will have better components to generate good color. Okay? So, monitor is also RGB. In printing, we print CMYK. In photography, it can be only CMY. So, the color that we get, it depends on the printing system that we use. Ink, substrates, printing machine, okay? whether it is digital machine, flexo, gravier, offset. So, the CM by K, the colors will vary depending on the printing system. 
okay so in photography only cmy or sometimes in gravier only cmy then we add black so cmy k okay when we make or create or in the pre press when we add up the design we send it from computer to print okay so there are good computers and bad computers i mean bad means not so good for color management so between the pc and the macintosh the macintosh is much better equipment for color management it has a built in color management system called apple color sync which which is a part of the operating system so it's available to any program that you use is the apple color sync it's part of operating system then there is a interface color sync has a interface to the it, it interfaces with the application software like adobe photoshop illustrator so on corel draw to some extent but not very good but adobe suit it works very well and then some suppliers give the ready made profile but the ready made profile may or may not suit your condition its gray balance may be different tone may be different okay total ink weight could be different so user custom profile that is most appropriate for high quality okay so these profiles work on apple color sync which is part of the operating system and it works much better way than color management in the pc pc doesn't have good color management so you have scanning or digital camera it gen it scans in rgb or digital camera gives you rgb images so rgb images it gives its color in terms of what is the red value green value and blue value okay that's why we call it rgb colors are reproduce using three basic lights red green and blue so this is a particular value of say x color that color is displayed on the monitor so what it does is this particular color what the scanner has scanned it looks for the nearest match what is on the monitor so monitor nearest match probably could be something like this okay and then we send this color to the printer for print so we print in dot percentage some printers can also in photographic and give density values so you get cmyk so converting from here to here here to here is done through what we call the interpreter if there are different people say if you get south indian fellow north indian somebody from east india if they speak their own language they will not understand each other so they need the interpreter so this needs some kind of a interpreter to convert this color into this this color into this okay so this interpreter is in the form of cie lab what we discussed last time or lch so any color coming from anywhere it goes through this box it goes through this interpreter because any color can be expressed in terms of lab okay like rgb cannot be converted into cmyk directly it has to be converted to lab and lab will then convert into cmyk so each each device will convert its rgb values or cmyk values into lab
okay and then lab will convert it into the appropriate device language whether it's rgb or cmyk okay and get to the nearest match so this is ci lab is an interpreter which can make any device talk to any device so this ci lab we call device independent color so earlier rgb cmyk those systems are device dependent color ci lab is a device independent color okay it's not related to any device it's related to the how we see color so we use some chart like this this chart we print on our printing machine whatever printing machine you have your conditions so you have to print this under your own condition which will give you how your machine is printing printability of your machine and along with this you must print out other information which i showed you earlier for gray balance for total link weight for dot gain and so on so once you print this in cmyk on your machine this cmyk is in dot percentage so if you see 50% of magenta on the art paper and the same dot on the map like so though the dot area is same the color doesn't look same okay color looks different so cmyk is a device dependent color it depends on where you print what you print you know in which machine but any color any color from that cmyk can be measured in terms of lab okay so lab cmyk can be converted to lab direct so we print on the printing machine whatever printing machine you have this i'll just come back little later then when we scan we scan in rgb so this target scan or taken on digital camera it has various colors so that rgb can also be measured in terms of lab so lab becomes a common language whether for rgb or cmyk okay so after printing we have to measure the color and you have to in printing normally we take 2 degree so in your instrument you will have setting for 2 degree so you must set your instrument for 2 degree and measure all the patches or measure the color okay this is used in paint textile and other industries when you are measuring lab normally we measure lab without filter okay but some people also measure they cut down the uv light so there are different filtration in the system so you must set your filter and must be consistent with that so from what we measure from scanning or digital camera what we measure from the monitor chart what we measure from the printed chart we create what is called icc profile okay the software will produce icc profile and the scanner profile can be loaded onto the computer as a rgb profile scanner or digital camera your monitor profile can also be loaded as a rgb profile which you measure and the cmyk profile can also be loaded on the computer so we'll come to that uh, 
So don't get confused. So when we measure monitor, when you calibrate your monitor, you get various patches like this. So you have patches to measure your printing. You have patches to measure your scanner or digital camera. And there are patches also to measure for the monitor. So the monitor profile will be created measuring these patches. And this is how the workflow goes. RGB is converted to LAB. And this LAB, when you want this image, when you want to view on the monitor, from LAB it is converted to RGB to see on the monitor, because monitor is RGB. If you want to print, is converted to CMYK, so we print in CMYK. Okay? In photography, it will be only CMY, but in printing, it will be CMYK. So this information going through LAB can be converted into RGB or CMYK like this. This is like a color workflow. Now, we also get sometimes customers send the picture which are in CMYK. So this CMYK customer picture can be converted to LAB and then you can convert it to your own CMYK profile for printing. Okay? Or to display on the monitor like this. It's slightly confusing here but you have to just <laughs> it's a where the color course can be much longer, much, much, uh, you know, for a longer duration. So we are only talking about how it works. The color management system, then it can work like this. RGB, RGB file is input, converted to LAB, and then to, for display, converted to RGB again, or for photographic output. CMYK, input, CMYK converted to LAB, then for printing you may convert it to CMYK or for display it can be RGB. Okay. This is this is how the operating system works on your Macintosh. Okay. So there are a lot of interconnections within the computer, application software and Apple Sync and so on, display. So you need to, when you calibrate your monitor and you, if you want to see your image as you will see in the final print, you need two profiles, one over the other. One is a basic monitor profile. You calibrate this monitor to your lighting conditions lighting conditions, flare that is coming and so on. Like you adjust your TV, brightness, contrast, colors you adjust on TV, you need to adjust this. So those sorting will stay in the graphic board of the computer. And after that, you load your printing profile. If you are going to print on map litho, on this basic calibration there should be your map litho profile. If you are going to print on your art paper on the basic calibration, basic calibration will remain the same. You load your art paper profile. If you are working something like this other substrate, you load that profile. Then your image will look as you are going to see it after printing. Okay. Then correction with that visual is much better because then you can visualize how your image is going to look like after printing. So you calibrate the monitor, okay. So then you, this is called color gamut mapping. You are adjusting your monitor to your printing condition, okay. This is little bit complicated. Just forget about it. But when you make ICC profile, this is what happens. Internal structure of the profile. You don't have to worry about it. When you do it, it happens automatically. Okay. So that is device color, RGB coming, 
like I showed you tone reproduction, limit of tone reproduction. So each color will have its own tonal curve, red curve, green curve, blue curve, like you see in the Photoshop. Yeah? Some of you have worked in the prepress? Or maybe if there is time, I will show you afterwards in Photoshop. So there is image is basically made of three color. So there is a red curve, green curve, blue curve. Okay. So that is called three by three matrix. Okay. This I am just showing you for your background now. You don't have to worry about this. And here, this is four color now for printing. Okay, so it goes through matrix like this through the computer signals and so and so. If customer is sending CMYK file, that can be converted into a LAB, and then you convert to your CMYK. So when you compress the color to suit your printing conditions. How you compress that is important. One is called perceptual, com perceptual compression. In this, all the colors are compressed to fit within your pa ink and paper. Paper is the lightest color, ink, solid ink is the darkest color. So tones are compressed within that limit. Okay? So this is what happens. This is your tones in the original. In printing, this is your limit. You cannot print beyond this. This is your limit of printing. Okay. So, but you still want to get these colors. You want to keep these details in the picture. So in perceptual, these colors, this is your limit, so it, you cannot go beyond that. So the colors which are outside, they get compressed from the boundary to like this. So you still keep the details, but the details are compressed. So this we call gamut mapping to fit within your ink and paper limit. So this gamut mapping will still keep the details like the original, but it's like fooling the eye. You are reducing the details, but you are maintaining the detail. Okay. So when you apply perceptual compression, it becomes like this. It is good for pictures, photographs, and so on. There is second one, which is absolute colorimetric. In this one, this is limit, but these are the colors outside. In this, the outside colors, whatever the colors are outside, they just come and sit on the border. So you lose the details. But this is good if you are printing say logo color, logo of a company or some brand color, then this kind of comparison gives you good result. And when you do absolute colorimetric and if you have also digital proofing along with your printing, if you proof that picture or that job, on the digital with absolute colorimetric, it also stimulates the paper color. So your digital pro proof doesn't look very white. It will take the color of the paper that you have, you are printing on the machine. If it's mapped like on your screen, then it will show you that color. So you get better representation in digital printing with this. There is another one is relative colorimetric. It is like perceptual, but the white point of the print is mapped to the white point of the digital. It's slightly complicated, so just 
remember that it's slightly like this and saturation here the saturation of the color will be exaggerated at the cost of the detail the detail will be less visible the saturation of color will be more visible highly visible okay so this is now in photoshop color setting so when you make a profile you load this profile here okay rgb profile here if it's rgb cmyk profile here dot gain here then other settings and then this you save as with particular name so when you recall that name all settings will automatically come so if you are using adobe suit and if you have say this setting you have applied in photoshop then you will go to what is called adobe bridge in adobe bridge if you click on this the same setting will go to illustrator same setting will go to in design same setting will go to pdf so all your adobe suit will have exactly the same setting so when you make the make your uh, pre press your file and send it for pdf it will not change if pdf has a different profile and here you have different profile it will be changed you must have the same profile also in pdf you must have the same profile in pdf so that your colors will be consistent your picture will be consistent okay so that you do through a, this is something not available in corel draw that's why corel draw is all right for designing not for the pre press it's a i think for the pre press it's a useless software so if you are working in corel draw you get export your files to adobe suit and then you you know apply color management so you have to keep whole process under control to make sure that your colors come right then only you will get good color match so computer to in digital reproduction is very important because you don't know what is happening inside the computer your ink preparation must be good especially in packaging okay we call ink kitchen color matching must be good then in spite of doing all this sometimes the color will still appear different because color is ultimately only in your eye so if there is if two colors are the same but if one is coated uv coated that color may look slightly different if there is a haze if the paper is texture if the box is converted viewing angle and the surrounding area this makes color appear slightly different so this you have to keep in mind so uh, that is called appearance science color perception and asset one of my good friend who is a famous visual communication artist he has this definition for art absorption of light rays or reflection or refraction t is transmission so art is nothing but the science of rays so if you control all this then you become you are a winner okay so this time is not enough for all this but i try to cover the <laughs> whatever what is time now we can we have still one more i'll show you so far okay now i'll how many are here from packaging yeah because in when it comes to packaging it becomes little more complicated okay look at color accuracy in packaging printing so in packaging you use variety of substrates and variety of printing processes okay there is a very very wide variety let me tubes i 
Okay. So in packaging, when customer is shown the proof, this is a common practice. They show light, medium, dark. Yeah. The problem here is there is no numerical value, so it's difficult to say when you print how light, how dark. It's 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 difficult. So still, most people are following this visual approval. Printing process is like a musical orchestra. If all the departments work in cooperation, the final result is good. It's like music. In music, even if a single person is out of tune, the music is spoiled. The same thing happens in printing. So this we had seen before. So I'll skip this. Color exists only in the eye. This also we had seen last time. Light source is important. Viewing conditions. So you need a control light. Okay, so we have color in three stages: color creation, color measurement, and color management. Okay, these three must be followed in a systematic way. So, in packaging colors, we use CMYK, or we use CMYK plus additional colors. Sometimes we have just spot colors. Sometimes there are some very special colors. Then pastel colors, metallic colors, pearlescent colors. These are all variety of colors we use. So there it becomes more complicated. This I'll skip. So depending on your application, after printing the basic test form, we can also select what kind of test form can be used for a particular company. Okay. This has now variety of pictures. Somebody who is doing a lot of uh, skin tone pictures, we can use this kind of form. Or for with many special colors, we can again have some form like this. Okay, with special colors. So spot colors like PNG or special color like Cadbury's. So color evaluation we must measure all the colors using spectrophotometer spectral values then we have to make sure that color match achieved spectrally we have to also measure ink spectrally to make sure color match is achieved including finishing process that is after coating lamination or uv that's why i say do not trust only lab values measure spectral colors and do not trust only Pantone number because Pantone in different books will be different. It will look different. It's not the same. Then there are many, many colors which become individual component in the final printing ink depending on the process. Okay. So in the printing industry, uh, in some processes, they use the dye-based things, which, see there is a wide variety. Also in pigment, there is a wide variety. Red, there are 49 different red pigments, orange, 12, and so all dyes and pigment together, it is something like 239 different colorants. So these are the basic colorants with which you make your inks. So the quality of that is also important because in packaging you have to get the right color. So test form analysis when we do, we have to print on the production substrate and the inks which we are going to use in regular production. Special color values of the substrate and inks must be noted, must be written down. Some printed sheets coated with aqueous or UV varnish depending on your process. Some print, printed sheets are laminated. All color measurements and profiles calculations done at various stages. Gloss measurement of the substrate and ink is also done at various stages. And the substrate brightness noted. How bright? Okay. Because some pastel colors will look good only on the bright 
bright papers. If the paper is not bright, the pastel will not look bright. It will look dirty. So the ink management is very important. So on press management. So some ink management has now come on some printing machine, some gravure and flexo machines. Anybody doing gravure, flexo? No, all offset. So there are analog tools and digital tools. Analog tools are color chart, Pantone catalogs, and so and so. Digital tools are the this electronic devices which will measure the color in terms of LAB dot percentage, RGB values, and so and so. So Apple Macintosh and PC. This is the difference. Color sync system, level workflow. Profile verification and correction, color gamut comparison, all possible on Mac. Poor system level workflow on PC, system is dumb. Monitor calibration we talked about. Origination and design, poor software, Coral Draw, MS Office, PDF. Good software, Adobe Suite, PDFX, proprietary, some proprietary softwares, special multicolor. In prepress, these are good software, Adobe Suite, PDFX, some special multicolor or proprietary. In prepress, adapt customer file as far as possible as RGB files. Use Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator or some proprietary software if you have special requirement. So measurement system, densitometer, color emitters or spectrophotometer, we talked about it this we know so in densitometer there are two kinds of filter sets one is called status e one is called status t status t is american status e is european so that works european works better as far as the density measurement is concerned it gives you realistic density values of the ink deposition these are called narrow band filters then polarization filter, Americans don't use polarization filter, European they use polarization filter. So your difference between waiting and the drying is less if you use polarization filter. So this is better. Color emitter, we saw it works at three points. Then there are setting like two degree and ten degree. In printing industry we use two degree setting. Okay, colorimeter gives metameric match, so you have to go spectral, measure the spectral values of the color for better information. This we saw. So there are various systems available. One is called camera color measurement. That is also becoming common now. O offline color measurement. You take the sheet, measure it. Online color measurement. This is on the machine when you you measure and you can send signal to the machine. Okay, for a ink zone adjustment, and there is a inline color manage management measurement. So that as soon as it is measured, automatically the signal will go for the ink setting. Okay, and the color is corrected. So this is a measurement geometry for normal densitometer. This is what you need. Call. 0, 45 or 45, 0. The light measurement should be this way in the instrument. But this system is not good if you are printing metallic color or metallic substrate. So you need what is called another one, SPM densitometers or multi-angle, which are better to measure the metallic colors, integrating sphere. Okay. Are multi angle measurement for metallic colors. So, in color management, you get the instrument, and there are higher level instruments where the your measuring instrument will move automatically on the chart. Okay, this is what I use. Then you get the color gamut, like we discussed before. So, this is compression, and then you measure the customer sample and you measure your print it will give you what is called the delta e what is the color difference between the customer sample and your sample 
in terms of color so that we measure and there are five different formulas the latest one is a 2000 formula so we have to make sure we are using the right formula every time we measure what is the color difference so one is 76 so the size of the ellipse shows that within that ellipse when the color moves it still looks the same okay so as you go to saturated color your tolerance is more in the center the in the gray the tolerance is minimum so this is with 76 this is with 94 formula which is improved on 76 but your meter will have all the five formulas this is with cmc color matching committee of dyers and colorist is two is to one one is to one and this is 2000 so 2000 is the latest formula which so you must make sure with what formula you are measuring your delta e this is very important also to measure the inks when you get the inks this we talked about various printing processes so you need to add the strip and you have to give the tolerance lower and upper tolerance using this lab values okay not just visual light dark you must measure like this and give the numerical value then it's easier to control on the machine so there are other aspects which still affect color like we talk gloss texture shape surrounding viewing angle viewing distance size haze so this is concentrate on the circle center of the circle for short time can you see something yeah you see the flag of india but there is nothing so this is called color appearance yeah there is nothing but still you have after effect of the color so this is what happens even after measuring there are some color appearance this is called color appearance so this is something which is which will still make some changes even after measuring this I showed you. So all these factors must be kept under control because everything affects ultimate printing. Your preventive maintenance, your condition of the machines, your viewing light, ink control, paper control. Because printing is a combination of all this. So you keep control and then you can get good printing. Okay. Yeah, any question? If you don't have questions, then we are through. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yeah. As you told, there are five formats to calculate the entire value. Sorry? As you told, there are five formats to calculate the entire value. What is the difference between that format? I should do the size of the ellipse? Yes. The tolerance changes. Tolerance change. Sorry. Can you show it again? So you have to work on the tight tolerances. Well, ultimately color is you have to see with eyes so the smaller the tolerance is good for the match yeah any what is next last time we had some more people from packaging no? i think dcpl was there yeah they are not come this time 
is the latest model, right? 2000 model. Yeah. That is the spectral photo model you are saying? No, it's a formula which is programmed into the into the instrument. So, so I have the instrument in that all the five formulas are there. So I have to select which one I want to use. It's upgraded with time, those formulas. Or those just five standard formulas? No standard. The last one was 2000 improved. Yeah, so now it's 2016. No, no, the, but no formula has come out after that. That's the last one. That's the last one. The first one was in 76. But that did not match visually correctly, so they improved on the formula. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the printing industry, people are still using the oldest formula. I don't know why. No. Now only after talking to some people, okay, but they still talk about 76, even though the standard. So I also recommend it. Well, I'm also on the standards committee. I review international standard. So I see in the new standard they have given both 76 and 2000. Except for a few customers uh, in the packaging, the high end, the multinationals, the rest of the industry doesn't know much about LAV and LAV. No. They don't know they about a densitometer. They don't even know about density. Yeah, they still depend on light standard. Yeah. You know, that's what they can see. <laughs> even if I give a script. They're difficult to match in printing, light. Even if I give a strip, they don't have any uh, no. way to measure it. Yeah. But it's for your reference, it is good. Yeah. And Anything the, else? The shade, the shade cards also have to be changed periodically. Yeah. Or you have to go for electronic. <coughs> <coughs> measure the customer sample. So when someone gives you a sample, say, customer say, okay, this is the sample I picked. You can measure that. So I, as a first step, I mean, he doesn't know what shape it is. No, you measure it. With the spectrophotic. You measure it and you try to get your ink to match into that. Including these, uh, including the pantone. Yeah.